We good, Tebe? We look yes, we're good when you are. Off you go. Hi, Maggie. You've done the introduction. You're done? Yeah, I think it's... it's Maggie, I can't hear you. I want to say uh, this new note. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm awesome. ready when you are. Oh, awesome. Um, okay, cool. We are live already on stage TV, but I've, I've got to say to our audience especially, we're just getting used to the new normal of having all... It's going to be that bit of can you hear me, can you mute, unmute, and all of that. But nevertheless, um, to everyone who has just joined us now, we're going to hear from uh, Tebe Ekarifeng, who, has, um, who is the founder and CEO of Brand Leadership Group, founder and chairman Brand Africa, founder and principal um, Africa Brand Leadership Academy. And I have to say, I am very jealous that you actually climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I think that's another conversation we can have later. But again, thanks. Good nice. <laughs> to see you again, and uh, you have the stage. Thank you so much, and thank you, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to address our our distinguished Africans from around the, uh, the the continent. The topic as we want to talk today is really about reimagining the continent, reimagining Africa. What we need to do to build brand Africa. I don't want to say rebuild because we are constantly building and how to ultimately inspire made in Africa brands. You know, I don't know anybody else, but I know exactly where I am, but not everybody knows where we are. You know, some people land in the continent and they have no clue where they are. Like Kim Kardashian, when she landed in Botswana, she says, I'm in Botswana, South Africa. I don't know flight. Well, you and I know exactly where we are, where we are. but you know, not only do they not know where we are, some of them actually uh, say some uh, some derisive uh, uh, things about us uh, uh, to offend us uh, uh, because to them we still we still uh, just monkeys in a uh, uh, in the jungle. To them we are still a hopeless continent, a continent that is in agony and has got woes everywhere else. Well, I've traveled the continent. I've been to every single uh, country in the continent, including the disputed uh, uh, areas. And I've done everything interesting uh, in the continent, whether it's bungee jumping, climbing mountains, uh, whether it is uh, skydiving, hang out with the uh, uh, gorillas or uh, uh, riding uh, elephants. I've done the continent. I've seen the continent. I've also seen the difficult parts of our continent, uh, whether it is uh, all the, the gates of no returns from Ghana to Senegal to Benin and, any, and many other countries. I've also seen some of the difficult parts of our continent, you know, uh, when you go to places like Rwanda and look at what we do to ourselves, if you look at the genocide of 1994, it's not what the outside did to us, it's what we also allow the outside to enable us to do. Also what we do to each other as brothers and sisters in the continent where it's a xenophobic attacks in, our, in, in South Africa. But, you know, throughout all my travels, I uh, also said I must have a bit of fun. Not just jump, I must dress well, I must... Uh, must be regal like an African because I think we are the most colorful, most uh, uh, dynamic uh, people in all of the world. And we eat everything. I shared a meal from Libya to, uh, to you know, Namibia to Lesotho to Botswana, every single part of the continent. I could fill up this whole uh, presentation today with just food. Uh, as you can see, it shows a little bit on my cheeks and everywhere else. Some of the food was quite interesting, you know. I was uh, uh, enjoying such a delicious meal, and I said to my driver, after we left, I said, what is that meal? Uh, actually, uh, he, uh, during the meal, I said, what is this I'm in, in, enjoying? Because it's so delicious. And, um, and he says to me, it's, um, it's, um, fresh meat. I'm like, yeah, what kind of a meat is this? Uh, you are enjoying fresh meat. And as we left the place and we're driving out and I'm looking on the right hand side, I see people chopping off all kinds of animals. And I said to him, what are they doing there? And he says to me, they are preparing fresh meat, sir. So, you know, I've eaten all kinds of foods around the continent. It's our continent. That's what we love it. But I think what I love most, most about our continent, or what we, what we can build from is what Kwame Nkrumah did in 1963 on the 24th of May, uh, on the eve of the, of the birth of the Organization of African Unity. Uh, he put out a master, a master plan of what we need to do as a people to re-see, to re, to reimagine this, con uh, this continent. He said, as we are taking over the independence, we need to industrialize. We need to create a common monetary system. We need to, we, we, 
We need to open up our borders. Uh, we need to uh, create peace. He says we need to enable Africans to travel the continent. That's what he laid out in 1963. Yes, we have not done that because half the time, half our leaders slept, or not all of them, uh, many of them slept through the entire promise of 1963. And that's why we find ourselves where we are. So what is the state of affairs? I want to focus on something that I'm perhaps much closer to, and that's the state of brands in the continent. Because I think the brands, the state of brands gives us an idea of really where we are as a continent, where we are as a people, and where we are in terms of industrializing the continent. So for the past 10 years, I have uh, done this study with, uh, with, with Joe Paul and Kenta uh, across the continent and, Af- and published it in African Business on Africa's best brands for the last 10 years. Every, we did every year, as you can see from the covers. And what have we discovered? 80% of the brands that Africans admire are non-African. So there is a rejection of everything that is made in Africa. And that's what we as Africans now need to deal with and ask ourselves, how do we reverse this? How do we reverse uh, this? Because if you look at where we are spending our money, alcohol, financial services, food, where are they spending money on us? The clothes. If you look at the list Gucci is on the list for the last 10 years. Electronics, all the phones we use, the computers we use, the automotives we drive, all of them are non-African. And where do the brands come from around the, around the world? Well, America, Europe, Asia, and Africa is number two at 20%, mostly from Nigeria, Kenya, and South Africa. And the leading brands in those two continents, in, those, in, that, in Africa, MTN and Dangote. If you look at how old our brands are, We've been in this business, the global brands have been in this business for 80 years. The average age of a number of brands is 80 years. The average age of an African brand is only 40 years. Because many of the brands that we consume, if you go look at your fridge now, go look at your refrigerator now, you will find that in your own refrigerator, most of the brands come from only a few companies. We need to create those super brands out of here. If you look at our story, the most admired media brands, BBC, CNN, Canal Plus, RFI, Netflix, Al Jazeera, we are not telling our own story. And another research was done recently by Africa No Filter. What did they discover? 63% of non-African media don't have correspondence in Africa. 1% of the content from African news agencies comes from African news agencies. So, and when they do cover us, They want to speak about the politics, the poverty, and the famine. We want to speak about the greatness of the continent. But of course, you know, Achinua Achebe said, until the lion learns how to tell its own story, tales of the hunter will always be glorified. So we need to tell our own story. How are we going to do this? How are we going to build, rebuild the continent? One, we need to invest in Made in Africa. We need to invest in our own continent and ideas come from our continent. If you look at, for example, Jollof, which is a staple in West Africa. If you look at the staple of Jollof in West Africa, so yes, the Nigerians, the um, uh, the Senegalese and um, um, and, and many others will, will say who makes the who, 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 Senegalese, Gambia, Nigeria, who, who, uh, and Ghanaians uh, will always argue who makes the better uh, Jollof. Uh, while we are having that argument, While we're having that argument, um, Jamie Oliver went ahead and created his own brand. And now we are upset. We got upset that Jamie Oliver is owning Jollof instead of us having repackaged it and took it to the world. When a young man's helper in South Africa created this gene for nine and sold it for 950 dollar rent, which is about 40, 40 dollars or so, 50 dollars or so. South Africans will complain. They say, how dare he sells jeans so expensive, named after himself? Who does he think he is? But when Meghan Markle came to South Africa and bought a pair of those jeans, all of a sudden, there was now an excitement about, but we need to get Tepo's jeans because we want to wait until the world validates us before our own businesses and brands can be taken off. But we are very quick to rush to go buy Gucci and uh, uh, and Stefan Ricci and Giorgio Armani, people who've never heard of Tommy Hilfiger. Some of them even have got things to say about us. I don't know how true this is, 
but it's been making the rounds for years. Had I known that niggas would be wearing my clothes, I would never have made them. Tommy is alleged to have said. He had to the number one endorser of Tommy Hilfiger, the main nigger himself, Lewis Hamilton, if that's how Tommy chooses to call us. So you look at Ethiopian coffee. They had a battle with, 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 with them. With the Starbucks. How did they resolve this? They said, we are going to take this to the highest courts. Because this coffee comes from Qatar in Ethiopia. They won the, the, the battle. And now everybody is, uh, now everybody understands that coffee comes from Ethiopia or Ethiopian coffee is the preferred brand. And Starbucks now understands that. And so how do they deal with this? They, everybody they make a little less of what they used to, but Ethiopia makes a little bit more of what they used to. Second, we need to celebrate our culture. We need to celebrate who we are because it is our DNA. That's where we draw our authenticity. So that's why sometimes you don't understand what this example of this South African, uh, Richie Nisi, who when he created the Shibelani dress and sold it, for $3,000 or something like that. South Africans again went mad. They said, how dare he decide to commercialize and make so much money out of our culture? Well, if he doesn't, somebody else will, like Louis Vuitton, who then took the Basutu blanket and sold it for 3,000 euros. And we complain again. Because when one of our own does it, we complain as well. Who better to own it than us? Next thing we go out into the world, and tell people this is our fabric. Everybody knows this is Vlisko out of Holland. It's been around since 1800s. We've now appropriated it. The same way we've appropriated the Basutu blanket from the British who brought it to the king of Lesotho. And now even our presidents say they are wearing African when they show a little bit of that uh, uh, fabric that, we t- that they, they took from Vlisko. What we need to do in celebrating our culture is to look at what our good friend from Ethiopia, or from uh, uh, Nigeria, Twinde Wolabi has done. He's taken the Yoruba uh, uh, crafts, uh, a way of, of weaving, uh, of, of weaving his, his fabric and created a brand out of it. That's what we need to do. Or well, the young man uh, from South Africa, Laduma, has taken the, 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 the traditional jerseys that they used to be knitted, uh, when they come out of initiation and wear after initiation. He says, how do I create out of that culture, elevating our culture. Part of a part of accepting and celebrating our culture is accepting our languages. You know, I think it's in Guiwa Thiongo once said, if you can speak all the languages of the world, but you cannot speak your mother's language, then you are enslaved. That's why you have to admire the East Africans when they said, Kiswahili is the biggest spoken language as the most dominant language. That should be our Main language here. That's part of how you rebuild and take over your own culture. Three, let the young and the women lead. Because if you look at this, if you look at, if you look at the statistics of the continent, 70% of the people in the continent are under the age of 30. This is a continent where the median age for the leaders is over 60 and the median age for the, for, for the continent is under 20. So the people with ideas for the future have no say in where we headed. But you know the youth, very soon they will revolt. They will revolt and go out there and demand their space. I was in, I was in, as you can see, I was in um, Burkina Faso and I bumped into many of them. And they were saying, we do not want French money here in our continent. If the governments in our governments in the region are not going to fight this battle, we are going to take it upon us. Four, make it easy for us to trade, to travel, and to transact. Can't understand how difficult it is that more than, uh, there's more than 30, 40 currencies around the continent. How are we going to trade easy when the free, uh, when Africa Free Trade Continental Agreement comes in? How are we going to do business with each other? Here locally, if you look at the brands that we admire are local, 
but the brand that transacts across the, the one that makes it easy to do business across the continent is non-local, the dollar. The only way to reposition the dollar is to create our own pan-African currency. Because how else are we going to move from 15% to 50% into Africa trade by 2030, which is what the Africa Free, Africa Free Continental Trade Agreement, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement seeks to achieve by 2030. That's nine years. We have nine years to move from what we've been for the last 50 years to something that we need to be, do business with each other. I mean, look at how much it's taken me. This is my travel. Uh, these are my stamps from the rest of the continent. And these are my, the routes I had to take. You can see, I had to move from South Africa, Johannesburg. Sometimes I had to go all the way to Europe to come back to the continent. Sometimes within the continent, I had to go to multiple points before I get to the point which is just next door to me. And yet, we say, Africa, your time is now. Is it really? For Africa's time to be now, we need to do all the things that I've said we need to do. We need to take advantage. We need to, we need to re-own our culture. We need to re-own our narrative. We need to build our own brands and we need to make it easy for us to travel the continent. Because as Nguigi says, otherwise, if we want to turn Africa into a new Europe or Asia, as we know, China is in every single country, then let us just leave our destinies to those countries. Because they know better how to do it than the most gifted of us. Because all they have to do is to be themselves. It is time for us to believe in Africa. As Fela Kuti says, if you don't identify with Africa, then you never have an identity. Thank you. Thank you so, 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 you. so much, Tebe. I have to say uh, it, it, it's, high, it's high time we did. And it's it, looking at your entire passport and the entire map of how you've traveled the continent, that is pretty amazing. I mean, one of the biggest challenges everybody faces or all of us face is uh, the closure of borders, the access to different African countries. It's one continent, Correct. but why would you have to travel to, to, to Africa? Why would uh, a one-hour flight cost six hundred dollars? I mean, this is why we're having all of these questions. I know we've, we've walked away with of uh, reimagining a new Africa, a new Africa that has one culture, you know, one language, speaks one language, in in different ways, and that's the only way we will uh, uh, achieve development and growth. Uh, again, I really want to announce to our um, uh, audience that uh, we will be leaving this particular session, but we're going to look at how to do business in Africa, in the new Africa. How do you do business with open traders? We'll be moving to the next room, hold out, leave, and then uh, go to the auditorium, and then look look for where